There's one about a mile up there. I'm just gonna sit still and see where he goes. He is on the move. There he comes. All right, he's coming down there. Got two. It's actually looking like it's about to rain. I don't remember there being nothing on the radar. Golly. There are squirrels everywhere. The problem is just getting them to stop. They're in that fall pattern where they're just feeding and working like crazy. quite a few more barking up this direction so that's the way that we're gonna head <clears throat> been promising y'all woods tour I guess this is gonna be kind of my woods tour slash hunting Ain't that time.
as slow as I've ever seen this. They used to clay mine this property. This is one of the old clay pits. There's a bunch of them out here, but normally this is slap full of water. Just a little trench still left over there. Tell you what, you kind of forget how fun squirrel hunting is till you put the stalk on one like that. You could hear him feeding a long ways off. Finally got up here underneath the oak tree and he was bouncing around from limb to limb, but I could see the shells dropping, so I was able to pinpoint him that way. Pretty neat. I've got several now. I think we're gonna call that good for this recipe. Go on back and clean them up. All right, well, as far as cleaning squirrels goes, I found a uh, way on YouTube, I don't know, a year or so ago, that is so much quicker than the old way that I used to do it. I know a lot of people like me would take a squirrel, make an incision down the back, stick your fingers in there and try to rip it apart. And my Lord, it felt like you needed the jaws of life to do it. But I found a new way that works pretty good. I'm still trying to perfect it. Just take an old sharp knife, flip the squirrel over like this, make an incision just beneath the tail. Come down either back leg just a little ways. And what you're trying to do is make a flap here that you can stand on. All right, now that I've got me a flap, I'm gonna put the heel of my boot in that flap. Grab the hind legs. And just pull up. Now he's mostly skinned. Next, just take an old pair of pliers, grab this last little flap, and you can pull that down. You'll just work that down until you get either arm out of it. Just like that. Next, I'll take a pair of kitchen shears. Cut the ends of every leg off. I'll also do that up here. I'll cut the head off and the ends of each front arm and I'll be right back with you. All right, YouTube's not too friendly on gutting something. So you can see what I did here. I took those same kitchen shears and come up through the sternum, opened him up, cleaned all the guts out. 
I also take those same kitchen shears and I'll break this pelvis bone down here so I can clean out anything left in the intestine tract. Now, if I was gonna fry this squirrel, I would go ahead and cut the shoulders off, the hind legs, and the back strap out. But because I'm gonna cook this a certain way in the pressure cooker, I'll just go ahead and leave this whole pressure cook it and I'm gonna pull the meat off of it later on. So this squirrel is cleaned and ready to go. All right, excuse our messy outdoor kitchen. Okay, all I did was let the squirrel soak in an ice water bath for a few hours in the refrigerator and you'd be surprised how much blood that'll draw out. You hear people talk about putting them in salt water, putting them in buttermilk. I have found just really cold water for a few hours or overnight pulls the majority of the blood out of the squirrels. So in the pot, there's a cup of chicken broth. I'm just gonna place my squirrels in the pressure cooker. And I'm gonna cover them with a little bit of seasoning salt. A bit of garlic. And some pepper. I'm gonna layer this one in and repeat. And in case I forget to say it in a little bit, after you get done pressure cooking these, do not throw away this broth. Even if I didn't add chicken broth, the squirrels make their own broth, and that is delicious. That's what you want to use to cook your dumplings in. So that's it. Got them seasoned up. Very simple. You can also add a good quality beer in here. Uh, that gives it a lot of good flavor. Don't do nothing cheap or watered down. Uh, like I said, you only have to do broth. You could do water. The squirrels are going to make their own broth, but this is just going to add to the flavor of the chicken broth. So I'm going to cover this up, get it on heat, and I'll show you how we're going to cook it. All right, now I've got it on the heat. Keep in mind, it's going to take a while to bring this up to temp and actually steam it. You've got real cold squirrel in there. I use cold broth, so it's going to take quite a while. But what we're looking for is once we see steam coming out of this top vent, that's when we're going to put our weight on, but only after we see the steam, and then we'll let the weight sit for a little while, build up pressure. And once this starts rocking, we're going to count for exactly 12 minutes. That's, that's crucial. Any longer than that, it tends to turn to mush. Any less time than that, this, the meat's just too hard to pull off the bone. All right, that's exactly what we're looking for. That weight just started rocking. I'm going to start my timer for 12 minutes. All right, I let these squirrels cool off for a little while, just enough that I can handle them. And all I'm gonna do now is separate the meat from the bones. I'll put it over here in this bowl. And once we get a bowl full of it, we'll move on to our dumplings and then go add all this together in the pot. You can see this is why we pressure cook them. Makes them nice and tender. Makes it where you can pull it right off with your fingers. Alright, what I do is I buy these Pillsbury Grand Biscuits, and this is the lazy, quick, easy way to make some dumplings. Now, if you're like me, and you don't have a roller, just put some flour out so it don't stick. Press that down, put a little more flour on top of it. Just take you an old plate. A hard plate works better, but a paper plate works just fine too. All right. Now that I've got this meated out, just start cutting it in some strips. That's all you're looking for right there. Just make sure you got flour on both sides so they don't stick. This is a good time to go ahead and put some pepper on all your dumplings. All 
and I put a little extra flour here to thicken my gravy. Well, I call it gravy to, th to thicken the dumplings. Once I start putting them in the pan here in a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and put some pepper in that. All right, now we're ready. All right, y'all, excuse the fan. It's burning up hot out here again in Florida. Welcome to Florida. Cold this morning, wearing a sweater, flip-flops this afternoon. All right, I've got all the broth to a rolling bowl. I added a couple more cups of water, a couple cups of broth. Put the squirrel back in, brought it back to a rolling bowl. Now I'm gonna add our dumplings. And you wanna make for sure that this is bowling and rolling like it is before you add these or they won't turn out right. And add just a few at a time. And keep them separated for just a few minutes. And do that with a fork. And you'll just keep adding these every so often. Now once I get all these in, because these have flour on them, I'll just kind of take a look at my liquid because I want this a little bit thick and creamy and if I don't think it's thick enough after adding all my dumplings I'll put a little bit of flour in there and thicken it up all right I just pulled this off the burner after basically simmering it down you can kind of see the consistency I'm looking for there that's what I think of when I think of chicken and dumplings I'm not trying to make this basically a gravy but you want to cook that down to the point that it's a little bit thick and creamy and you can add all the flour that you need to that cornstarch whatever you want to do to thicken it up or just keep simmering it down but to me that's the perfect consistency it's just kind of creamy so we're gonna let's bowl. eat yeah let's eat we're gonna put this in some bowls eat it up and try it Alright, can y'all smell that? And honestly, it smells like chicken and dumplings. It really does. Alright, we're going to say a quick blessing and give this a shot. See what it tastes like. Alright. I'm curious to see how she likes it. <laughs> Be honest, I really don't care. Big old piece of squirrel meat. That's good. Tastes like chicken and dumpling. Mm-hmm. That first piece of squirrel is perfect to me. It's tender, yeah. Yeah, tender, but still a little bit chewy, so doesn't look like I overcooked it there. Let's try one of these dumplings. The dumplings great. Again, I love cooking. I am not a baker. I am not gonna bake nothing. So this was the lazy, easy dumplings. Ah, tastes you did, good. You did more than I do, because I usually just do the flaky biscuits. <laughs> She just tears off a piece of biscuits. I guess that'll work too. I kind of yeah. flatten them out and cut them. No, you did more But it than tastes I did. good. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Honest to God, it tastes like chicken and dumplings. So if you have somebody that you want to introduce uh, squirrel to, this may be a great recipe. This is the only recipe that we kind of like in winter when it's cold. We're not soup people. We're not chili people unless it's cold. And it's, sadly, it's really not cold outside, even though we just had a cold front go through. But uh, this is kind of one of those meals that's uh, just a feeling, warm me up type of meal. But like I said, if you want to introduce somebody to squirrel, I think this is a great recipe. If you like these type of videos, let me know, throw it in the comments, because I have several more squirrel recipes that I can include. One that is my favorite. So if y'all want to see that, I got a lot of squirrels in the places you've seen. Uh, I, I lost count of how many I've seen this morning. It's hard to hit them with a 22, but I can carry a shotgun out there and get all that y'all ever wanted to see. So again, hey, I think it's good. We're gonna tear it up. If you like these videos, give me a thumbs up. Thanks.